Hey love, what's up? Welcome to Confidently Uncomfortable. I'm your host, Jago, health and lifestyle coach and not so regal confidence queen. Coming at you with the real, the raw, and of course, the uncomfortable. My mission is to show you that to be confident, it has absolutely nothing to do with being perfect or having it all together and everything to do with you getting uncomfortable and pushing your limits. Thanks for joining me. Let's dive in. Spoiler alert, if you didn't know, I don't plan out my podcast to a T. I don't write a script. I write bullet points maybe 50% of the time, and I really just speak what's on my heart. And when I sat down to write this podcast episode, it turned into multiple. It turned into somewhat of a mini series and a three to four part series that I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks. So um, this is going to be part one. And what I'm doing is basically, I am sharing kind of where I've been at with my own self-love journey and my own confidence and going into the holidays. And, you know, if you have been feeling lower energy, feeling like there's a shift happening in you and just part of that feeling can be really draining. This series is for you. Um, We're going to focus in part one about reconnecting with your body, um, feeling grounded and connected to who you are. Um, So if you've been feeling really disconnected from yourself, from others, this is a good episode for you. Part two is going to be more about (laughs) responding to rude relatives. So that's all about creating boundaries. Um, You know, working on yourself is hard and sometimes getting in those environments around family can break down all the hard work you've done and it can feel very discouraging. So that's going to be part two. Um, Part three, we're going to be talking all about self-care slices. Um, figuring out what self-care can look like for you instead of thinking that it has to be this Pinterest perfect plan. Um, definitely looking forward to that going into the holiday season. Um, so this three part series, four part series, we'll see what it turns into. Um, very much looking forward to it because honestly, y'all like I'm sharing what I'm going through right now. Normally people tell you like, Oh, you know, wait until after you're through it and then you can talk about it and then you can come from like a teacher perspective. But y'all, I'm coming at you from a friend perspective of someone else who's also going through it, right? Um, I've told you guys that when it comes to finding confidence and self-love, that it's not just this end destination, right? You don't just wake up and just say, all right, today I'm confident. I've done it. All right, check, check. I'm done. No more confidence, right? I don't have to work on myself anymore. That's just not how it is. That's not how it goes. Especially if you're someone who deals with anxiety and depression, you're constantly having to work on yourself and know yourself so that you can work on yourself in a way that's the most effective for you and going to make you feel the best um, and grow from it. So This episode is all about getting grounded and reconnecting with your body. And why did I want to do this episode? Because I was feeling so freaking disconnected from myself. Um, I'll give you a little bit of insight. It's kind of crazy. Coming from having one of the most amazing events I've ever done, absolutely changed my life. Loved the women that I worked with hosting this retreat back in September of 20. what year is it? 2021. And then right after going into one of the best launches, one of the biggest body confident blueprint launches I've ever had with some of the most amazing women I've ever served and feeling really like in my purpose. So I get to those points, I'm coming off of that high and then suddenly I am lost. I'm feeling so disconnected. I'm feeling so confused. Like, okay, I've been working for this. I've been working for this success and now I have it. Why do I still feel lost? And what I was realizing was it's so easy to get caught up in chasing, you know, your business goals or your, you know, if you're working in a job, like your corporate goals. And really you can lose yourself in the process if you're not doing things that bring you joy every day. If you're not doing shit just to do it. If you're constantly living for the future and you're not being in the present. And by me working for so many goals that were in the future for me, I had been working towards the future for months, nay years, because I had to put off the retreat. And so by doing that, my 
brain was disconnected from my body. I wasn't in my present body. And if you're someone who's like me and just works really hard and can burn yourself out easy, um, this keep listening. So coming back to myself, I'm recognizing, okay, I am not feeling connected to myself. I'm struggling with anxiety. I'm feeling down, but I'm, you know, from the outside in, everything seems perfect, right? I'm having record sales. I'm having amazing um, transformations for my clients. I'm, you know, all of these things. I moved into my dream city that I want to come back to. I have an amazing apartment. I have an awesome husband, which I do. Um, What's wrong with me? And I, again, had to see that I was not taking time to be in the present. I was so focused on the future that I was, that's all I was working towards. And once I got there, I felt almost lost or empty. And so if you have been feeling that way, if you've been feeling disconnected, I'm going to be sharing some of the things that have been helping me get reconnected with my body. It's something I share with my clients um, in Body Confident Blueprint, my one-on-one clients. And it's something I'm going to share with you. This is the shit that I'm actually doing. Um... If this is you, if you're like, oh my God, Jago, I relate so hard to this. First of all, I want to tell you, you are not alone. All of my clients have been sharing this with me too. They're feeling like there's a transition that is happening in themselves and maybe they're losing friends in the process. Maybe they're, you know, having to figure out what that means in their life. And, and that can feel really confusing because you're lo- you're leaving old thought patterns. You're leaving old patterns and habits that you used to do and trying to step into new ones. And sometimes that can make you feel distant from your current self because you're developing and leveling up. And so you need to reconnect with your present self in order to continue to level up and not lose yourself in the process. Because I was close to it, but not today. We didn't, we didn't have, it didn't happen. We caught ourselves early. So The question I had to ask myself and what I would have you ask yourself if you're feeling disconnected is when do you feel most connected to yourself? And I go further with this because spiritually, I also want to know when do I feel most connected to God, the universe? Because I believe one in the same. Um, When do I feel most connected to myself? When do I feel the most connected to um, the universe and God? And three words <laughs> stuck in my head. It was nurture, nature, and naked. <laughs> so follow me with this because this is going to break down into truly what I do and how I've done it. But um, the first thing I needed to do and what I would recommend to you is to give, nurture yourself. I think so often we are taking care of others, especially if you're out there and you're a mom. Um, you Maybe in your job you're taking care of a lot of people. Um it could be uh, just you've been pouring a lot into others and not not pouring into yourself. And, you know, the cliche of like, oh, you can't pour from an empty cup. It's true. It's actually true. <laughs> um, so giving yourself the kind of nourishment, the kind of nurturing that you are giving to others, to yourself. Um, starting with things as simple as writing a letter to your younger self or speak in in saying whatever needs to be said. It sounds very open-ended, but basically take a picture of your younger self, pull it out next to your journal. You should really do this. It's very powerful. Um, and just, you know, talk to them and, and speak to them and, you know, whatever you feel like maybe they need to know. Maybe you hear some things from them that they tell you. Um, connecting with her and just having a conversation like you would a friend. Another thing you can do if you're not a writer is to actually speak to yourself like you would to her. Um, So if you're catching yourself being really negative or or putting yourself down because maybe you do have a goal and you feel like you didn't reach it or you feel like you messed up today or you're just totally dropping the ball on that thing at work and you're feeling really behind, it's like you, you wouldn't talk to your younger self, little Jago, you wouldn't talk to her in a negative way and say, you're so dumb. You're so stupid. Why would you do that? You would just be like, Hey, you know what? Today might not be our day to get that done. And that's okay. What's something that would make you happy today? Like legitimately, that's a question I have to ask myself every single day. What's something that would make you happy today? And when I'm asking myself that I'm asking my younger self, because she's the one that can really help lead me and figure out what brings me joy. 
Um, WWYYD, what would your younger self do? Um, Typically, it comes back to play. So often as adults, I feel like we're taught to stifle play. Like when you go to the playground with your kids, are you taught to just like, oh, you should sit on the bench and just scroll on your phone or just sit on the bench and observe your children. It's like, nah, get in there. Go climb the monkey bars. Go down the slide. Like you might look like a crazy person because none of the other parents are doing it, but go do it. I do that with with Tom. We, We were on the swings the other day and it was a couple months ago and literally we both face planted. I, I was swinging and I wanted to like jump off the swing and I went to jump and then I fell face forward. He laughed at me. I laughed too. And then he starts doing it. And then when he went to jump, he got caught. And instead of falling forward, he fell backwards behind the swing. And it was the most hilarious thing in the entire world. And we hadn't swung since we were kids. And I think that was just so cool to be able to do something like that. So to tap into those pockets of joy each day. And if you're feeling disconnected from who you are, it might be because you have been really engulfing yourself in these titles of who you think you should be, whether it's the title of mom or dad or the title of wife or the title of CEO or the title of like, boss babe or I'm just giving these general titles but whatever those titles are when people say what do you do those responses if you're getting really stuck in that and kind of losing the joy um, that makes you you and you might be sitting here and thinking well nothing really brings me joy right now and I want to tell you that I've I've felt that before too and it's it's a hard feeling and my first step with that is if you're feeling that way definitely reach out for help um, ask someone for help, reach out to a counselor, reach out to a therapist, always big fan of that. But then also like what used to bring you joy and maybe you can try and start doing that then or be open to exploring and finding that joy and tapping into it in a new way. I like, again, talking to my younger self to do those things. So when it comes to nurturing, um, I like when I was a kid, I love my mom, y'all. She's the best. She used to like, you know, rub my back and, and like play, like play with my hair. And she was just so nurturing and loving towards me. And I, you know, you can get that from your partner, obviously, but like, it's good to give that to yourself too. Um, so maybe it's like giving yourself, you know, a little bit more TLC. Maybe it's doing a little bit more self-care. Um, maybe it's making yourself your favorite comfort food. So not necessarily um, that you're like, oh, I'm going to eat super healthy and be really strict. It's just like, what what brought you joy as a kid that you used to eat? And can you make a fun adult version of it? Or maybe it's the kid version that you have. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's reasons for food beyond just... Um, macros. I know that sounds crazy as a health coach, but it's true. Sometimes you need something that just makes you feel comforted and doing it in an intentional way can be very loving towards you and nourishing towards you and nurturing towards you. Um, another thing you can do as far as nurturing is like, again, finding the pockets of joy. So things that just make you happy. I mean, y'all, if you've been following me on Instagram, (laughs) you know that I was struggling to, to go to sleep and I ended up just, I ended up purchasing a mini trampoline just spontaneously, um, at one in the morning a week ago. And I'm obsessed. Like it came in, I put it together and I have been jumping on it every single day, at least 10 minutes a day, um, ideally in the morning. And I'm doing that because I, I'm, I love being a guinea pig and I want to see if by doing it in the morning, it makes a difference in other aspects of my life. And so far it has, it's made a really big difference. I'm it's so fun for me and I do it on my back porch and my neighbors probably think I'm crazy, but I don't care. Um, it, it brings me joy. And, um, I, last year we thrifted and got some rollerblades and, um, the fact that we got them for $20, two pairs for $20 was awesome. And we were able to ride those and, and all that. So that's something that, you know, it just made me feel like a kid again. And I always recommend doing things like that. If you're feeling disconnected from yourself, um, do something that brings you joy, or at least used to bring you joy as a kid. Could be coloring, it could be puzzling, it could be, um, I don't know, buying a fun stuffed animal and that can be your new stuffed animal you sleep with at night. I don't care. You can be 30, 40 or 50 and still sleep with a stuffed animal. There's no judgment in this, <laughs> in this space. Just so you know, we're all friends here. Um, so I talked about nurture. Let's talk about nature. If you haven't noticed, we are on our screens more than we ever have been before. 
Um, the pandemic really brought us behind screens even more. It's shifted a lot of things towards screens that maybe weren't previously, whether it's your work calls or your kids schooling, or you're just having more time to consume things on social media or movies or whatever. And we are shifting into that habit without even realizing it because it happened so quickly. We got put in this pandemic mindset. It wasn't really a bad thing to binge around that time to binge on different like shows and be on your phone all the time. And that was kind of what they were promoting is like, stay home, stay inside. But really (laughs) we need to put our phones down and get outside. You got to get off your screen. You need to get outside. It is crucial for reconnecting with yourself. Um, The more that you are consuming what other people are doing, the more disconnected you feel about your own life. The more you get caught up in this comparison of thinking, I I wish I could be like them, or why am I not doing that, or putting yourself down for not being productive, or whatever it is, um, that's not helping us, right? Putting yourself down at where you're at in your current state by consuming where other people are at is not helping you. So what you need to do is you need to put your phone down and you need to go on a walk. You need to go somewhere outside. You need to go somewhere. Hopefully there's sunshine. If there's not, y'all, walking in the rain can actually be hella peaceful. Um, I've done it before. (laughs) Just get some good shoes. Um, And by getting outside and reconnecting with nature, it's really great to reconnect with yourself. So some recommendations I would say with this is... (sighs) Focus on your breathing. Look around. Take in your surroundings and find gratitude here in the present. I struggled for, like I said, a long time not feeling present. I was so stuck on the future endeavors and whether it was worrying about the future. I know a lot of people worry. I wasn't really worried. I was just more overwhelmed and consumed because it was exciting things for me and things I'm passionate about. Um, But being able to slow your mind down, not think of everything you need to do in an hour, everything you need to do this week, everything you need to do, you know, next month, next year, whatever, really just be present in that moment. Um, It's hard. It's crazy how quickly our brain will shift to start thinking about something else. So you have to keep bringing yourself back. And what I find is the easiest way to do that is to stick to really simple things. So focusing on your breath is something that's so simple that you can just focus on breathing in and releasing. And then just coming back to your normal breathing pattern, but still being aware of it. You can be aware of sounds. I think this is a really good one too. Like what's the farthest sound you can hear while you're walking? So if you were to, if you're walking right now, what do you hear? And then coming back and thinking, all right, what's the closest thing you hear to yourself? Typically it's your breathing. And looking around, looking up, finding like some beauty around you that can just seem so small that if you were looking at your phone, it would just be overlooked. Um, I've started doing this and it's been amazing. So I've started actually listening and like walking, going on walks and I'll actually um, not listen to music or I'll listen, like I'll have something on very, very low or I'll spend half the walk with no music and just walking. And it's been very, very helpful with just feeling more connected to my body. Another thing I'll do while I'm out in nature is finding gratitude in that moment. So in that space, just starting with things that I'm thankful for just in that current moment, like thank you for the sun that is shedding this like light on me and bringing me joy and giving me vitamin D and all the nourishment that my skin needs. And, you know, thank you for like my ability to walk right now, however you're moving. That's an amazing, amazing gift that we don't give ourselves enough gratitude for. Um, The weather, some days it's good, some days it's quote unquote bad, but I think it's always there and it's something that we can feel grateful for. And so while you walk, you can just kind of go through your list of things that you're grateful for. And it's really cool to, again, coming back into like slowing down by by focusing on gratitude. So that's something that really, really helps me, um, you know, 
get reconnected with myself by recognizing all the things that you currently have in your life. Instead of just thinking about all the things you want, all the things you're working towards, there's nothing wrong with having goals. I have my clients create goals. I create goals. But if you are constantly just reaching for a vision that's outside of your reach without finding any kind of power in your presence, you are going to feel lost forever. You're always going to feel like you're searching. Um, and I had learned that the hard way. And so I want you to come back to yourself now, find gratitude in the present moment and literally get grounded. You have seen me (laughs) probably, you know, put my feet in the dirt (laughs) and jump around, do some shaking and grounding. Now I'm jumping on a trampoline, anything to just focus on like your body's movement and finding gratitude in that movement is powerful. I really like the jumping right now and shaking because I, I used to be so afraid as like when I was younger, when my body would jiggle and shake or I'd sit on a chair and like my cellulite would show or like my legs would rub together when I walked or any of those things that like were just crazy things that would take up energy in our brain that didn't necessarily need to be there at all. Um, By coming back into a state of like embracing that movement, embracing my legs touching, embracing all those things, it has been such a healing space for me because I'm coming back into my body. Things that I used to be, you know, so afraid of, I'm embracing. Things I used to be like so ashamed of showing, I am showing, I am shaking, I am doing. And that's a really cool place to be. And it starts small. So don't feel like you have to do the next one, but I'm going to share it with you anyways. There's something you can do in this next one. So I told you it was nurture, (laughs) nature, and naked. So yep, get naked. That's my advice. End of podcast. Just kidding. Um, The truth is it's really easy for us to avoid our bodies altogether. Um, If you're on a, you know, body positivity streak and you're really trying to focus on it, a lot of times the advice is to just like focus on your worth outside of your body and focus on, you know, all the things that make you you that have nothing to do with your body. And I think it's a really good practice to recognize and remind yourself your worth is not tied to your body. It's not tied to your size. It's not tied to a number. However, your body is still something that is providing you life. It's still something that's serving you each and every day, and it deserves to be celebrated and not just forgotten. And I think the the missing link in a lot of these self-love journey, body and body positivity journey is that Um, they stop it at like no longer connecting to your body. And then you feel so disconnected to your body. You almost don't recognize yourself when you look in the mirror because maybe your body has changed sizes. Maybe your body has developed. Maybe you just had a baby. Like there's so many different reasons our body is going to change. And that's why it's so important to learn to, you know, love your body and connect with your body in all different chapters. It's going to change everyone's body is going to change. We are going to get older. We're all currently dying right now. I know it sounds crazy and really dramatic, but it's true Um, every day. But we're also can choose to live every day more and more and be more present. So by getting more connected to your body, by actually, you know, looking at your body and not dodging a mirror, it's very powerful. So here are some options with getting naked. If you don't truly just want to have a naked day where you're just around the house naked all dang day, I like it, but you don't have to do it. (laughs) So my suggestion is to start with just (sighs) connecting with your body in some way. So if you have a dry brush, I do dry brushing. Um, it's awesome. I'm a big fan of it. So you can do it, uh, after you get out of the shower, Uh, you can do lotion. So putting on lotion that you love and just while you're putting on that lotion, like actually pouring love into your body. So almost like affirming your body while you're putting on lotion and and just saying like, thank you legs for being so strong and, and getting me through every day. Like, thank you like chest for helping me like continue to take in these deep breaths, like whatever it is. Thank you like stomach for continuing to help me digest food and just I know that sounds very weird like why am I talking to my body but our our body literally hears every single thing that we say about it and if you're like me coming out of a very negative 
body (laughs) self-image, then there are probably a lot of things you have said to your body that it still felt, it still feels in it. It, it, It's, it hurt it and it took that in. And for you to heal from that, you need to start speaking love into your body. Um, So I think lotion is just a really cool ritual to do. I'm a big fan of it while you're doing it, just speaking to your body in a loving way. You can even do it during like if you took a long shower, um, you can have affirmations that you're reading while you're doing that. Just being more present in that moment is very powerful too because again, our brain is constantly thinking about the next thing we need to do. If you can slow down and actually be present with your body while you're doing things that are showing it love, oh, it's like a game changer. It's better than just going through the motions of like, oh yeah, I did my self-care activities today, but really the whole time you were doing that face wash routine, you were just stressing about the next meeting you had or whatever it is you had to go to. And so slowing yourself down is going to help you grow into exactly where you need to be. I love baths. I'm like a sucker for a bath. People always like bash on being a lover of taking baths, but like big fan. It's huge. It's amazing. I love it. I have a whole thing. I literally just got out of a bath before I recorded this episode. Um, That's kind of what inspired this because I was naked and I was like, hey, this is really helping me feel connected with myself and my body right now. I should totally share this. And I said, don't bring your computer into the bathtub, just get out first. So I'm here. (laughs) I'm clothed. Um, and setting up a bath was really good for me because again, it slows me down. I'm able to like set up candles and put Epsom salt bat, um, into the bath. And like, you know, I'm, I stretch while I'm in there. I like breathe while I'm in there. I'll let sometimes listen to meditations while I'm in there, but just feeling very connected to my body. And it's super vulnerable, right? You're in a bathtub and you're butt ass naked. And a lot of times, um, it's very easy when you're in that vulnerable state to start to tear yourself down and be like, Oh, I can't believe you're sitting like that. Or I can't believe your skin moves like that or whatever it is that comes up. And if you can slow down and just come back to saying like, Oh my gosh, body, like you deserve this bath. You deserve to relax because we've had a long day. And I think that, that you absolutely should just take this in. And I know it sounds weird. Again, talking to your body makes a really big difference. Start doing it. I hope everyone just starts talking to themselves so much that it just becomes a normal thing. Like we're just walking around on the street and you see someone like speaking affirmations out loud and they're like, oh yeah, that's totally normal because everyone does it now. That is like my perfect world. Just side note, I'm I'm going on a tangent, but I can't help it. I'm very relaxed right now. If you can't tell from my beautiful bath and this um, tea that I'm drinking too. So other things you can do while naked besides having sex obviously that's good too um (laughs) but uh self-massage is great too uh you can dance naked I've had a lot of clients you know talk about how when they're getting dressed they're just very frustrated they don't know what to wear they're kind of putting themselves down and so instead of that kind of being your own hype woman and not immediately you know putting on a bunch of clothes maybe it's not fully naked. Maybe you're just wearing like your bra and underwear. If you wear a bra, bra and underwear and you're, you know, dancing around or you're putting on your favorite song and you're just kind of like letting loose and not questioning it. I think it's very easy for us who, you know, put ourselves down so much to judge ourselves. Like, ugh, why are you dancing like that? Why are you moving like that? And so to break that pattern, start just kind of playing, you know, put on a fun song, put on a goofy song, laugh at yourself for, for how you're dancing. You don't have to be, you know, super serious about it. Like you're a TikTok star, but just like, you know, have fun, move your body. Um, shake around. Uh, Like I said, wait to get dressed and take time for yourself, whatever that looks like. So you don't have to dance naked. Maybe it's just stretching, like doing yoga naked or um, in less clothes than you would normally do it. That can be a really powerful thing too. Because again, when you're moving your body previously, maybe you would start to pick yourself apart. And so by, by breaking up that thought pattern, you are healing previous wounds that you've given to your body. Okay. Um, all of this works. I'm speaking from experience, but it also takes time. Um, some days it's easier than others. And that's why I think journaling on this would be the first thing I would recommend. Come back to the journaling prompt of what do 
I do that makes me feel most connected to myself, right? And then ask your younger self, like, what brings you joy? How can I, how can I find joy today? Those are just really good questions that I don't think we ask enough. We're too busy asking all these other questions that maybe don't even matter in the big scheme of things. So big takeaway with this is <laughs> all of my revelations come from being naked in a bathtub. But no, seriously, the big takeaway is check in with you on a regular basis. Um, like I said, when I got busy, and it's going to be a busy couple of months if you're holiday people. Um when you're busy, it's really easy to just think about like the next thing you need to do, the checklist you need to go through, everyone else's things that you have to take care of, and we put ourselves on the back burner. So I want you to try and take at least one day a week. I'm not saying the full day, I just mean like Sundays, maybe just Sundays, like after the kids are asleep or after like you're done with, you know, whatever you need to do that day, you just take five to 10 minutes and just journal and, and check in and say, hey, Hey self, how are you doing? How are you doing? What, what's something that we did really well this past week? And then maybe what's something that we could do to show ourselves a little more love um, this coming week? And doing that can be really powerful and it can help you not feel so lost <laughs> while you're going through life. Um, life is short, y'all. And if you're feeling disconnected from yourself and like you're going through the motions, you're missing out on fully feeling what it's like to live. Um, I've been there. I've felt numb. I've, I've felt like I wanted to just avoid everything. And, and I'm telling you right now, slowing down and checking in with yourself is going to help you get through that a lot sooner. Um, be aware of what you're consuming and how much of it. So what I talked about on my Instagram story, and I'll end with this story, <clears throat> but I talked about my Instagram story, how I was struggling, um, you know, with my own self image. I was like starting to hop onto Instagram stories and immediately wanting to go onto a filter. And these filters are freaking crazy. I could do a whole nother episode on it, but I won't. I actually did a guest episode on that with another friend that I can share later. But, um, I was recognizing that about myself and putting myself down for like having a breakout, which is totally normal (laughs) y'all. And, I recognized that because I was wanting to hide and not show up because I didn't feel perfect, that that was more reason that I needed to show up for myself and be vulnerable for me. Um, what did that look like? I needed to reconnect with myself. I needed to nurture nature and naked. I needed to go out and be in nature. I needed to nurture myself and show myself a little more TLC. And I needed to, you know, take time with myself and my body in order to feel reconnected with myself again. And I did all of those things and I made time for it by lowering the amount of screen time I had, lowering the amount of consuming and starting to really pour into myself. And so it doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be like long and bougie. It can be. I love self-care that's super, super extended, but how can you fit pockets of joy into your day? How can you find things that really make you feel connected with yourself each and every day? How can I slow down and feel present in this tiny moment of my day? You'll get better at being able to do it for an extended period or even forever being present consistently um, by start practicing with small little pockets of that, okay? So find your presence today, slow down, and just know that if you're going through it, you are not alone. I'm here. And (laughs) I'm definitely excited about this series. So if this was helpful for you, please let me know. Um, Feel free to message me, um, share any of these little tidbits. And if there's anyone else that you know, that's kind of been going through it, I want you to share this episode with them and just kind of a little, little hug, hug or kiss on the cheek that you're saying, Hey, I was thinking about you and I really want you to listen to this. And I hope that that you do that because I want our impact to go beyond just us. Okay. Um, next episode will be all about, you know, 
boundaries, setting boundaries, <laughs> responding to rude relatives that are commenting on whether it's weight change or your <laughs> marital status or not having kids. Yeah, that's going to be a fun episode. So definitely be let ready for that. And then we'll get into um, more about self-care as well. So these next couple episodes, I think are just going to be very powerful going into the holiday season. So I don't want you to miss out. Make sure that you are subscribed and make sure that you share this with a friend. Thanks y'all. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for listening to Confidently Uncomfortable. I love being able to connect with you here and honestly, don't want it to end. So head over to my Facebook group, Body Confident Blueprint, and be sure to follow me on Insta at JagoFitLife. Also, if you're ready to get real confidently uncomfortable, go leave this podcast a five-star review and email me the review screenshot, support at JagoFit360.com for a chance to win a free 30-minute fitness audit and goal-setting session. I appreciate your support. See you next time.